This evil prison planet is what I term the counterfeit New World Order. Satan throughout history has slowly but surely built up this evil thing that conspiracy theorists call the Matrix, the Control Grid, the New World Order, which is the counterfeit one. He has worked via various secret societies throughout history, the Bloodlines, the Bilderbergs, the Illuminati, and all the rest of them. Satan has built this thing up, this counterfeit New World Order, this scary, evil control matrix. But that is not the end game. And that's where I think Christians who are into studying the New World Order are, I, I believe, being deceived and misguided. The 1984 style global surveillance police state oppressive tyrannical New World Order is not Satan's end game. If it was, he's really, really bad about it getting out. Okay? It's, 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 it's been leaked everywhere. Satan wants to reveal this to the world. He's the one who's working through these New Agers to reveal it to everybody. Through people like David Icke, Jordan Maxwell, David Wilcock, Alex Jones, Clyde Lewis, Russell Brand, all the rest of them. Satan is revealing to the world this evil control matrix. And then he's going to use that as a means of getting everybody to embrace the New Age of peace and love. Satan's real endgame is the global initiation of mankind into the New Age, and the way he's going to do that, like I've said, is to scare humanity to a point where they finally realize the nature of their enslavement. They become angry at this New World Order, they fight back, and I think that's what's going to be the cause of a lot of chaos that will lead up to the Tribulation. Then the New World Order will be defeated, humanity reclaims its power, feels empowered, everybody feels united with one another because humanity as a whole has risen up against this evil New World Order and now everybody has been initiated into the new age and that's why I said in an earlier video how in the new age they teach how fear is a catalyst toward transformation and I'm gonna come back to this over and over again fear new world order being revealed to everybody creates intense fear in mankind and then they fight back and become transformed and initiated into the new age they transcend to a, a you know a God consciousness everybody's transformed metamorphosed into new humans neo Okay, the new human blossoming butterflies, uh, they become that through fear. A, a global tyrannical dictatorship is not the end game. It is merely a means of achieving the end game. If you believe that a global dictatorship is Satan's end game, you are being deceived. If that were the end game, then there wouldn't be so many satanic people revealing it to the public. In the book, you refer to the, the, the destruction of the Twin Towers in New York, 9-11, as uh, what some people say looked like a controlled explosion. And, and one might read that as you giving some credence to conspiracy theories. You can read theories. the book in it's whatever a, manner you would like to. Do you to believe ever. that the, the Twin Towers were destroyed by forces of the American government or similar? You have to remain open-minded to any kind of possibility. To be at the summit of our evolutionary possibility, we have to live beyond the dead model of our animal selves, of our urgent primal selves. The distinctions between you and I, we know that they are an illusion. We share the same DNA. There are invisible energies that are passing between us. These invisible energies have to be harnessed and accessed because it's the only truth that matters. We've got a duty to come together to get over our superficial differences. Differences. We think that there's an infinite creative force that generates all consciousness and all matter and we are all connected and if you align yourself with this infinite creative force then you can be positive and you can be beautiful. I don't think it's a, a, a personal God, I don't believe in any particular doctrine or dogma, only that humanity is connected. After a while, I started getting suspicious about that. I mean, you know, the first few times I heard Luciferian people talk about the truth about 9-11 and the medical conspiracy and the Illuminati and all that, I, I thought it was strange, but I passed it off as just being maybe a few exceptions to the rule. But after a while, there were so many of them, you know, I said, okay, something's going on here. They're all New Agers, these people talking about the New World Order. Why are New Agers so interested in the Illuminati and the truth about 9-11? I thought only Christians would be into that stuff because I thought that that revealed the true evil in this world and that it could only be explained by a biblical worldview. But that's not the case. In fact, all this stuff actually fits better into the New Age paradigm than the biblical one. And slowly I started to realize there were two New World Orders. The real one, the one that Alice Bailey talked about, and the counterfeit one that New Agers and conspiracy theorists focus on. And they are revealing this counterfeit New World Order right along with Luciferian messages of human unity, oneness, and higher consciousness, always. And the message is, 
you know, look, they're enslaving us. They're stealing our power. They're keeping us from realizing who we really are, from realizing that we're all one. They're stunting our creative energy, all that. And just to be clear, like I've said before, this counterfeit New World Order is real, just like a counterfeit $100 bill is physically real. It all has to be real for this plan to work, and that's the point. And it's the fact that it is very real that is giving all these New Age conspiracy theorists real power and validity. And it's giving power and validity to their message, to their prescription about how to deal with the problem. And that's why this deception is going to be so powerful. People in growing numbers are researching this stuff, realizing that it's real, and then they go to people like Jones and Ike for advice on what to do. And they tell people to unite, to resist it, to realize you're a powerful conscious being. You know, Ike tells people to let go of religion because it's one of the tools of control. Jones tells people all of us of every religion have to unite and stand up against these people. You know, people of every religion uniting, that that's the satanic new age. So in the next part, I'll focus you know, a lot on Alex Jones because he's a major piece of this puzzle. But before we dive into Alex Jones into greater detail, I want to make sure that anyone listening to this has the right mindset going forward because you can't just learn the facts. You also have to be able to understand the right implications of those facts. For example, you know, I don't want anyone listening to this, you know, specifically a Christian after I get done with Alex Jones to simply conclude, okay, I got to stay away from Alex Jones. That's not the point of this. If that was the point, I would have immediately begun in part one with Alex Jones, but I didn't mention him until part five. The point of this video series is to reveal what I believe will be a masterful grand deception by Satan, which again has been to build up both the idea and the reality of a frightening, scary control matrix world government, which I call the counterfeit new world order, that is being slowly revealed to mankind in order to ignite within mankind a Gnostic new age awakening which will then be his cue to come in the flesh as the next, you know, new age Christ, the Antichrist, and establish the real deal new world order of Lucius Trust, Alice Bailey, and the Theosophical Society, the peaceful brotherhood of man, worldwide harmony. Alex Jones is part of a bigger program, and I know it might sound crazy to say that the biggest conspiracy theorist in the world is actually part of a bigger conspiracy than anything he reveals on his show, but I'm convinced that this is what's going on. He is part of the larger Gnostic army that is building up anger among, you know, the human population against the Illuminati in order to ignite a new age awakening and make humanity realize that they're God, which I believe is the lie specifically referred to in 2 Thessalonians, which I cited back in the beginning of part 1. 2 Thessalonians 2, 11 through 12 says, quote, For this reason God sends them a powerful delusion so that they believe the lie, and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in wickedness. Too many people just think of overtly evil acts acts like murder, rape, and torture when they think of wickedness. You have to understand wickedness from a biblical worldview. You know, you have to try and see how God sees it. And sure, murder, rape, and torture are wicked acts, but that's not all that wickedness encompasses. If you believe you are God, you are delighting in wickedness. For a created finite creature to think that it's part of the all creative force is wicked. To deny that you are in sin and to think you don't need Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross is wicked. So when the whole world becomes initiated into the new age, when Christianity is finally thrown out, when the Bible's thrown out, when everybody loves everybody else and is living in peace, it's going to be the most wicked time on this planet.